UFO knowledge. I have intimate knowledge of what the US currently knows about UFOs, minus the last two years. UFOs are primarily unmanned drones. UFOs are built to spec each time they are deployed. UFOs are created by a mobile construction facility that hides in the ocean. Construction facility destroys anything that comes close to it and will disappear for days when approached aggressively. US believes the facility has been active on Earth for at least 100 years or much longer. Fire away on questions. I'll answer what I can, you won't be disappointed. Is there a working theory on the origins? If so, care to elaborate? Quite a bit, but we think the construction facility has been around since at least 4000 BC. See sightings slash paintings from the early eras of history. Has any form of intelligible communication been established? Yes, it also depends on your viewpoint. They mostly want very little to do with us until we start to talk about war and nuclear options. It's one of the reasons why you see them so often at critical events. Do they know who or what is creating these craft? Yes, as mentioned earlier, the mobile construction unit is responsible for their deployment and construction. Any potential that they are made by a higher branch of the US government? Absolutely not. What allows them to fly so fast? What technology? Gravity manipulation and the materials they are constructed from. We think the construction unit is driven by AI. The response time to threats is almost instant and usually very calculated and well thought out. You all should pay attention to this. The majority of UFOs as I mentioned previously, are built to spec and purpose. This is why they are always different sizes. The contents and equipment usually mimic the intended purpose too. Is it related to that one under the rock in that one Scandinavian country? The one that deploys within tectonic spaces? No, this one almost never leaves the Bermuda Triangle. Bullshit. Governments have, and have had for a while, advanced anti-gravity crafts. You asked if the particular UFOs we study are the result of a foreign government, not if other governments have shittier versions. Speed alone tells us what we are looking at. Do the UAPs return back to the manufacturing unit? Yes, some come in and leave the planet, but very rarely. Usually, the same number that comes in goes out, unless special circumstances arise. It feels more like a carrier, but with construction capability. What are the purposes of the UAPs? Surveillance of humans? The US believes they are not here to harm us. They only seem interested in us once they realize we are destroying things around us, including each other. One of the officials in charge said something that stuck with me. They act like keepers of a zoo, uninterested in the daily life of wildlife until there's a problem. I can approach the facility without being attacked. Lol. The last unit we saw approach the facility didn't even have time to communicate they were being attacked before it was over. What's buried under the mesa on Skinwalker Ranch? Is that show even legitimate? It seems like some of the most legitimate research on anything paranormal that I've ever seen in my life and I'm very curious about what they seem to be finding. No idea that the project, if any is likely to be kept separate. There were two rare elements found fused together that were under the mesa, and I'm very curious what's going on there. No idea about that either. The crafts we recover are built with numerous elements. Some aren't even obtainable here. Are they friends? They cut their losses when crashes are recovered. Same with personnel. Zoo keepers aren't friends with the animals. Do you know if the entities behind the UFOs are native to the Earth? Like an older civilization, breakaway civilization, or a civilization of humans that escaped a previous cycle of cataclysm due to their advanced tech? Limited expertise, since my role is more craft slash analysis. US believes they are foreign to our world. A previous cataclysm could make sense. They also show up in times of strife, such as natural events. Also. I think that the other guy who was talking about approaching the area without being attacked 
is a remote viewer. I lurked on other boards, but haven't really been to this one since I was comfortable with the answers I had. I wasn't aware that was a thing on here. There were rumors among my coworkers that had psionic abilities, but honestly, it rarely comes up in a conversation. Give it a shot. Have you tried sending in a raft of hippies? The AI may not recognize them as a threat. JK. Based on previous disappearances and acts of hostility, we believe the construction facility has learned what is and isn't hostile. Usually, it will just move away or stay deep under the water. It doesn't fire on civilian boats, for example. Exceptions apply. We have seen one or two go missing, usually after sharp turns, etc. Any relation to Antarctica? My section monitored just this craft and any interactions it attempted. A previous co-worker did mention something in passing of Antarctica at one point, but I ignored it, if I'm being honest. Talking about other projects is considered career suicide. How about the destination of the space orbs? Is Jupiter a potential destination? I believe they are keeping a massive orb inside of the gas giant, though I have no evidence but many dreams of it. No idea. If it is a project, I haven't seen it. No orbs out of the construction facility, just UFOs. What units have been lost approaching the construction machine? Why have they not sent a sea wolf to investigate? The Jimmy Carter with its nanotech. Everything you can think of really. At one point, nuclear missiles were being toyed with again, and we deployed fighters and a sub with serious intent. Everything except the sub was lost. How have they come to the conclusion the UAP being released are ET? If they don't know what the UAP are to begin with, or if there is nothing inside them, it's a pretty big jump to go right to ET. They crash sometimes. Parts fail, and gravity engines near the surface of the planet can be like crossing an intersection. We recover these and sometimes find passengers. We mostly see drones now. Back in the earlier days, we saw a lot more piloted craft. Why do you not know anything about the last two years? Just curious. Moved on from the project because of new management that didn't trust older proven methods. Also, any details on what happened to the pilot that didn't have time to communicate? Normal approach details. Pilot responsive and actively talking. The feed cuts out pilot still talking, suddenly nothing. Poor guy likely had no idea it was likely a suicide mission. Based on what we've seen, construction facility has far superior weapons than the UFOs do. This weapon destroys the matter it hits entirely. It also shits on anything electronic in the vicinity. The contents and equipment usually mimic the intended purpose too, like the equipment share a pattern specific to its purpose. Yes, usually when we find a thinner model. For example, it would have no pilot and a lot of sensory hardware. My favorite is finding one that is fitted for research. If we are lucky, we find things we have never seen before. Before I left, we were looking at what we thought was a lab of some kind for genetics. Are you talking about the one shaped like a pear or a burger? Be more specific. This regard is the burger ones, isn't it? Size, shape, and speed are usually the factors we use to determine what the purpose of the UFO is. We get it wrong sometimes. They can be quite large, and both pear and burger shapes are known as builds. Is this the burger shaped ones or the pear shaped ones? Both. I've had two orange orbs approach me to within 100 feet one night, glowing translucent, but rather dim like the setting sun seen through smog. They were flying in 45 degree formations like this, about 50 miles per hour. Research slash science vessels sometimes have mobile light producing cameras used for multiple purposes from scouting to keeping threats contained or at bay. These are shaped like hammers and when operated are extremely bright. Red lights are a sign of hostility or caution to deploy weapons. Orange lights are usually for spotting minerals or living things. As soon as I blinked my flashlight at them, they accelerated to several thousand knots and disappeared over the horizon. Searched YouTube and found several videos of the same objects, mostly near San Diego. 
I'm not surprised. The range on those is quite large. The UFO was likely somewhere above you, quite high up. Is the underwater base near Catalina Island creating these? No. This one has only left the Atlantic Ocean twice. Both times were before I arrived. Are aliens human or humanoid? Humanoid. Very humanoid. Then, do you know anything about abductions? forced breeding programs, etc. Bodies are removed before we are allowed to perform work. We definitely see some passing by, hence changes in older proven methods by new management. Also, real true disclosure anytime soon, the Air Force is extremely frustrated with the lack of progress on their end. We felt similar, but are unable to share details with them. Jack's Valley is somewhat close then. I believe he was the closest so far to what's really going on. No one really knows, and anyone claiming to is full of shit. We know quite a bit about it all, but the shit is about five steps ahead of us. I believe there isn't a situation in which we aren't bamboozled by them. From what I understand, we biologically operate on a point-by-point -point time basis, and it's operating on a range of time. Still a nebulous phenomenon that is impossible to be precise about, and plays tricks. How do you study something that doesn't want to be studied? You absolutely nailed it with this comment. The moment we think we start to grasp what's going on, it'll either throw a curveball with its nature or intentions, or seems to instigate global conflict. We're playing checkers, well it's a hyper-dimensional Magnus Carlsen. So I'd assume this was sort of AI design that seems to be advanced yet already prepared for the get-go. Can you rephrase this? Basically, when designed to, let's say, be a miner, you will usually see hardware dedicated to resource collection on the vessel. If the vessel is something scientific, you may encounter things like tools, and as previously mentioned, something akin to a lab. We thought of it more as a, I need to go hiking. So the construction facility builds you a car, UFO, and packs it full of hiking supplies, and even adjust the shape to fit what was packed. Do you think there are fewer piloted crafts because the population of the facility, if any, is declining? No. The common consensus is that they are just being careful. I've heard recovery of living pilots doesn't usually go well for either of us. We suspect they piloted a lot of initial craft due to early complications. We also saw more crashes. Any bodies recovered show any ranges of aging we can recognize? I wonder if most of the inhabitants are either old or dead at this point, though younger bodies would disprove that, I suppose. No idea about age. Not my specialty. And asking about it would have been a net negative, especially now. Previous higher-ups were better about being open with information, since discovery happened quicker. What do passengers look like? Are they biological or android? Bio. Did you know anything about people such as Stephen Greer, Lou Elizondo, or whatever, etc.? Are these people in the know, or LARPers, or controlled misinfo, etc.? No idea. One name sticks out you didn't mention. Mentioning Bob Lazar by name would likely have taken you out back and put down like a dog. Do the math on why. Out of everything ever found regarding UFOs in general, what is your personal favorite? New engine was deployed with a very large model that I had never seen before. We usually see three to five gravity producing engines. This one had seven. Favorite object or find? Probably the lab, since we never fully understood how it worked before it was destroyed. Makes me wonder whether a meaningful distinction between scientific study and amusement still exists for them, if it ever did. This was before my time, but they talked about a bus UFO that had more occupants than hardware. Most of the intended purpose appeared to be for physical viewing. I wonder if they ever just wanted to look at the animals. How long until we can hang with aliens? Have any stupid cousins that destroy everything they touch? When do you want to see them again? This is a strangely recurrent theme. At a minimum, they have Cytronic devices of some sort. This reminded me of something in my first year. UFO crashes, they remove the bodies well before my team arrives. We start to look, and the craft is unpowered at first. A few minutes later, the craft powers on, and starts to close up. 
we radio out and get a response from the unit, removing one of the occupants that they are working on. Ship powers off, and the other team asks if we are good to go. No mention of how access was possible. I suspect the pilot may have interfaced with the ship by remote or psionic ability. Not really translucent, but maybe the outer shell was. They definitely had an inner core that wasn't see Lots of tools they used to produce light. If this is still about the orb, the shell that you may have seen was just the light around the device. I called the hammer. Why did the UFOs fuck up all those people in Brazil? Sauce? Might let me give you more insight. Was it by accident of them not knowing we'd be damaged by their equipment, or do they not care? If found, they usually monitor us. If approached at an uncomfortable distance, they flee. When cornered, it doesn't end well. Their tools can do harm to us, even for just scientific purposes. We think they just don't care. Do you believe we are under their control in some way? Or were sometime in history? Possibly, but I have no way of knowing. The higher-ups I worked for seemed hell-bent on discovering more about them. Usually not a quality found among controlled beings. What were the main reasons for the crashes? I'd think random lightning or freak accident, seeing how advanced they are. You'd be surprised by how many mistakes they make, especially the further you look back. One area they seem to avoid like the plague, we suspect is due to issues with gravity and flight. Before they figured it out, we collected quite a few mishaps there. They've tried to shoot some down, mostly over nuclear incidents, but failed miserably. Did you see written symbols in the craft? Yes, usually marked by doorways and key objects. Written language appears frequently on tools and critical items. Also, it reads like their objective is to observe and preserve. I agree. The idea was pitched that they are waiting for us to mature or perhaps something bigger to arrive, and they don't want us to ruin the planet in the meantime. What do you believe to be the reason for the uptick in sightings? Once again, my knowledge was cut off about two years ago. If you mean very recently, my guess would be the Russians and US having a secret little dance amongst themselves. When nuclear anything gets involved, we see large deployments for long periods of time. Strife seems to be the catalyst. Also, what is your scariest experience while engaging with the phenomenon? What was your favorite, if any? Doors closing on us as mentioned above made me wish I had brown pants. Still fascinated with the lab we found. It was damaged by accident and I never really got much time with it. Are you aware of any foreign A-tech that was successfully reverse engineered? Yes. We used to laugh at Russian and Chinese designs. We stopped laughing at China when they produced an operational but buggy version of their mining equipment. Still stumps most of our engineers. China also lies out of its ass, but from what we saw, we deemed it operational and working. Countries listed above have flight-capable craft, just not very good ones. I'm honestly surprised no one has asked about the energy source or internals. Heading out for the night, but we'll be on tomorrow to answer more. One example was shortly after I joined. They said one was downed, but two occupants were alive. The first team couldn't get close without being attacked. Aliens never seemed to recover their lost UFOs for whatever reason, so they just waited a few days until they died, then recovered the UFO. Hostility is usually their last option. Genuinely confused about what you're asking me. Recruitment isn't something easy if that's your goal. They usually recruit people with extremely clean background checks, and I never saw anyone under 35. What is their energy source? You mentioned Bob, so I think I know already. Correct-ish. The power source is E-115. The thing no one talks about is that usually. They seal it within the craft because it produces its own gravity field. Bob Lazar handled E-115, which was already pulled out, which is rare and weird. Protocol now is that only one person is allowed to handle E-115. I was forbidden from touching or interacting with it. We still have trouble producing this shit too. How do UFOs travel? In the context of those Tic Tac reports and Bob Lazar's report slash video where they seemingly jump through space time and light to appear in a new location. Notice how it just phases to a new location, like staggers? 
This is common when moving at high speed from a standstill or slow speed initially. Gravity distorts time and the object inside the field can stagger when traveling. I've heard the craft can detect the presence of a camera and when someone is filming them. Not unless the craft is put into a mode to detect a lens, no. If the UFO is standing still or hovering though, they won't miss you. You can see a face like you're standing in front of someone a couple miles out. Doesn't look like a camera though, their eyes are different. How are you able to talk about any of this? Didn't you swear to secrecy? Yes, liver cancer sucks. Wouldn't the government already have their eye on you, considering you could turn out to be a loose end? I'm not going on national TV or radio. I'm on a 4chan board. I'm sure they look at stuff like this, but cancer makes you feel a little different. Also, did you or your co-workers experience strange things outside of work that couldn't be related to what you saw? No. Usually most people working there had no prior interest in UFOs, or at least feigned not having interest. Ask me anything, I'll answer what I can. Your LARP is bad, and you should feel bad. Learn to read and on. Not true. Most zookeepers love their work and love the animals a great deal. I've wondered if some of them do like us. They definitely have the ability to destroy us. The spheres are a type of unmanned surveillance drone. Shaped like a hammer, but when activated, yes, they appear like spheres due to the intense light. They see light differently, and looking into the sun for them isn't an issue like it is for us. I can't speak for the psionic abilities, if any, since I've only heard rumors in passing. We believe the lack of communication was inherent to their personal beliefs about us. As mentioned previously, but active, serious discussion about destruction gets them going. Do you think they're playing some role in stopping rogue entities and dangers from space, hurting us on a large scale? That was another theory, yes. We think they are more interested in keeping the planet safe from us. Two main suggestions are that we don't spoil the planet before they arrive and take it from us, or they are letting us evolve and grow while preventing devastation. What do you know about this claim? Sadly, not enough to give you a good response. Remote viewing is a very strange thing. It's shown to work at times, but most of the time it doesn't. Or the conclusions have fuzzy connections, as if forced. As for the interdimensional aspect of it, I don't believe there's anything actually interdimensionally happening. It's just our best way to try and grasp slash perceive what's going on behind the veil. From what I understand, whatever is behind the phenomenon is the ability to manipulate matter slash energy in similar ways that we can manipulate information. We can create 3D realities and manipulate them via our understanding of machine code and linear algebra. It also seemed to be able to play around with space-time, almost as if we're sitting on or perceiving time that's been homogeneously transformed into projective space, while they are free to move about homogeneous space. If they haven't entered the projection space, then they could freely move about our space without interacting with it until they collapse their space coordinates into our projective space, normalizing their position with their homogeneous coordinates. Why does image analysis by someone competent on the original UFO always show weird stuff? Gravity and the reflective nature of the craft usually. Am I right in assuming the disco lights is just air absorbing radiation and being completely saturated by it? No. What materials are these UFOs made of? That answer gets complicated quickly. Short answer is an alloy that we cannot reproduce but only repurpose. This alloy is kind of like a film that fits over the frame of the craft. I mentioned they were built to spec. That's exactly what I mean the shape is always officially designed. The actual frame itself is heavier and composed of more elements. Both of these alloys have a lot of elements we cannot reproduce. One of the main problems when repurposing these alloys is getting them hot enough. They absorb heat very well and shaping the metal is a tedious process. Can you quickly walk through the process of identifying the contents of a crashed UFO craft? First team leaves that deals with occupants and initial discovery. We arrive and meet with an external member of the team 
who can touch and examine parts we are not allowed to interact with. We never have to cut our way into the UFO. We enter the first order of business is checking for E-115, then leaving the ship together to send it away. We return and look for any tools and loose objects that can be extracted. We then start to strip any specialized components on board, such as sensory equipment or navigation. We leave and a third and fourth team arrive, likely to remove the bulk of the craft. Tell me about the mobile construction facility making them. Shaped like an extremely large UFO, but as one mentioned before, more of a burger design. Almost never leaves the Atlantic Ocean. In fact, it will sit through hurricanes and only move elsewhere to release or receive a UFO. No visible weapons or cockpit from sat footage. It also does not use any lights, unlike other UFOs. Are there no other things making UFOs? Yes. UFOs arrive and depart Earth, but very infrequently. These UFOs are usually quite large. The US has been itching to get its hands on a freighter UFO, when inbound or outbound, but the chance has never presented itself. Leadership openly stated securing one would result in promotion. That makes sense for the ones like in military videos, but what about the saucers with multi-colored lights? I highly doubt these are drones or military, except for the triangle kind. Never seen a triangle UFO. Lights are usually on bigger vessels and are sensory in nature. They are also used to spot each other. Gets asked genuine questions, ignores questions, ignores bonus question. See below. Take less DMT when you ask questions and people might take you halfway serious. People you wouldn't trust to work on your car engine claim they are the go-to guy for examining UFOs. This seems very unlikely. I'm not here to convince anyone. You'll notice yourself coming back to things I've said over time on your own as understanding increases. Pay attention to the Space Force. We were told this would be a long project. Disinformation was one of the key takeaways. New management was hell-bent on going back to secrecy. They thought we were way too open with our operation. Sounds like OP's ship is the later form. I would not be surprised if the pilots are in sentient craft. No, they are remotely controlled or directly controlled. The zookeeper analogy is strange. Agree with another here that most zookeepers like their jobs and care about the animals. They display high levels of empathy. Some of the tools designed for abduction would make you rethink this. A lot of them cause pain or harm. A common tool we find is one that seems to scramble coherent thoughts and make the subject childlike. The best way I can describe its use is like forcing a stroke without actually having one. It makes you delirious, but also childlike for a few hours. Are these beings incapable of empathy? Do they have emotions? I assume they must have learned something from the recovered bodies. Never interacted with them. Only heard information passed along. They can be upset though with previously mentioned topics. They definitely have emotion. Are they from off-world and true ETs? The US and leadership were adamant they were off-world. Why the cloak and dagger? You're asking the same questions leadership struggled with. We were not entirely sure. If the Air Force is confused like you say, why is it the only agency we know of that is not cooperating with Congress in the AARO? You might get a laugh out of this. The USAF is kept in the dark. We operated above them. A close co-worker wondered if even the president knew. Namely, Trump. Because we thought he would just tell anyone. Any idea what they might be waiting for? Personally, I think they just want us to grow and become sentient. UFOs arrive all the time and dock with the mobile construction unit. The way I see it, travel time is quite fast. If something was coming to destroy us, it would have arrived already. Finding out the truth made them cry and fear for the lives of their offspring's will to live. I've always suspected my department was under a much higher one, with more information. I can't speak to any horrors or worries since none were mentioned unless we were pitching theories. As I stated above, I think a lot of US top brass don't even know about it.
I heard the phrase, fuck Bill Clinton, thrown around regarding access to information. I'm pretty sure he asked, if I'm not mistaken. Are they human looking, or do they resemble something else? Is it something we've seen written about in the UFO topics or pop culture? They are smaller than humans, and look like your typical grey aliens that you say. Holes for ears, and they can look at very bright objects without being blinded. I've never seen one move their mouth, but I've also never interacted with one. What do you know about these? Operation Fishbowl. Nothing. Vergana Crash. Nothing. Roswell Crash. They were accurate on some things. The material could have been internal components or small pieces of the alloy around the craft. The alloys I saw look different from the pictures. Operation Moondust. Rumors only. Do all nations coordinate their effort studying this Bermuda Triangle factory, or is each doing their own thing? Each of them do their own thing. US is pretty greedy with what it finds. We will usually extract information, but never offer any in return. What is the mining tool China has supposedly reverse engineered capable of? Hard to explain if you haven't seen it. Basically, it extracts the minerals via beam slash light directly out of the rock. It has the ability to fill the rock to some degree. China was able to figure out how it works and make a similar version. The problem with the one they built is it only operates for a few seconds before it runs out of power. They still don't understand E-115. It also exploded one time and they had to remake it. Are the made-to-spec craft you described just the metal-looking spheres observed and brought up in the latest AARO hearings? Seems to be a lot of orbs, discs, and tic tacs. Yes, this is exactly why they always look so different. Things like triangles and hard-edged squares don't exist though. Pill shapes are extremely sought after, and some we think are freighters. Not a huge variety you would expect from a made-to-spec craft. The best analogy I can give for the variety slash spec comment is I think of it like wrapping food in tinfoil on a plate. It's a bad analogy, but you get the idea. Usually, they will always be round or oval sometimes, even pill-shaped. The tinfoil fits the intended function of covering everything without squishing it. Even stories of MJ-12 suspect the president didn't have a need to know. Staff at our agency will usually older and had been there forever. This tracks when considering term limits. Many abduction stories seem malevolent. Previous post I mentioned tools. I think the harm they cause is the same as cutting open a mouse to check the local population for signs of bad health. Collateral damage. Do they just not like humans and like the planet? What's to stop them from just culling us all? They could absolutely destroy us if they wanted to. They have started launch sequences before that we suspect were tests on what they are dealing with. My personal view is that they have to stay out of our way, but keep us from destroying ourselves. I imagine life elsewhere in the universe often destroys itself. Do you think we will get more answers from the government, disclosure, as in them telling us aliens exist, or will the cover-up continue? At one point, they briefed us about opening up information about the craft, but not the construction unit. Nothing happened for months. New leadership shows up, suddenly it's back to bullshit and secrets again. As to the USAF, they must have the images and video of these things pretty close up. You'd think they would be the agency with the most knowledge of the subject. The USAF's goal is to fight other countries. They have footage, but it was mostly discovered and recorded. By sheer chance. The Space Force, however, will be an entirely new thing. Their focus is similar to ours, with a sprinkle of disinformation. Are all craft related to this factory in Grace? The ones we looked at, yes. Or are there more species coming here? Possible, but I wasn't made aware. It wouldn't shock me. I've wondered if we are being protected from others. Do we produce it or is it collected from other craft and just recycled? Because that seems to be the case. We tried to produce it and failed. We produce a shitty variant of it and use it for certain parts that we build. Most of what we use 
for things that cannot be replaced is recycled. Our ability to rehash through shit has gotten better slowly. Or is it used up, to the point we need to produce it to continue testing? They set aside certain amounts for research. Most of it goes towards reuse. Is there tech that was gained from these craft that the military widely uses today? Or civilians for that matter? A lot of your stealth, aircraft, sport smoother designs for one. Learning to track them also helped with targeting software. Laser technology comes to mind, since it's a crippled version of what they use. Most of what I saw was way above us. It's hard to put the hammers and, and how you see through them into words. It's not like a drone camera, and it's not a clear image, to us at least. Can you clarify? They have a distinct fascination with radiation. Remember how I mentioned they don't go far from home base? When Fukushima happened, the construction facility deployed multiple UFOs to the location over multiple weeks. They were also very interested in Ebola at one point. We can't confirm abductions there since the local population is... You get the idea. No one cared. According to Alessandro, Italians seem to have a good grasp on the phenomenon, including that they originate somewhere from the Mediterranean. Is it possible that there is another UFO factory there? Starting this thread and seeing everyone mention the Arctic has me worried if there were others. It would make sense with other sightings, since as previously mentioned, far from home is rare. Does the moon hold anything of interest? No, not that I'm aware of. We know that UFOs entering and exiting the atmosphere do not go towards any known planet often. Are the flying orbs just scouts, research drones? Do you mean orbs in the sky? Or do you mean landed craft deploying them? I previously mentioned that there are tools that are shaped like hammers. They emit extremely bright light and are used as a sort of drone or scout. They are able to view almost 360 degrees and detect everything from minerals to bio. If a human encounters them, they are usually deployed to keep watch and figure out when to wrap up and leave. Do you think they interfere with our general science or investigations? Yes, they do not want to be studied. They also do not collect down craft or occupants. It seems to be an oh fucking well approach. E-115 is the exception. They don't seem to enjoy the idea of us toying with it. Do they seem to learn when the craft get caught? Yes. There is an area they actively avoid in Mexico, among others. They also deploy more drones than piloted craft, unless absolutely necessary. Do they become harder to capture next time? Yes. Is the technology they reproduce increasing rapidly or lags for years? I wouldn't say it's an increase in technology. It's more like adjustments slash better understanding of how to operate. It's one reason we fought about 100 years for the first deployment of the construction facility. If we're here for years, we would have seen the majority of all adjustments made. Is your department using AI to learn more about the findings you make around their tech? Not when I was last around, no. Does the factory produce any signature, heat, electromagnetic? How do you track it? Both. We rely mostly on detecting the gravity it produces. It normally doesn't produce heat outright. When it does, we believe it's in the process of construction, since a small heat buildup can be detected when a craft returns or exits. We think this happens when it's being broken back down into parts or assembled. We can only detect these heat signatures when it's near the surface of the ocean, so sometimes a UFO will pop out on us. How do you know about other countries' efforts? We don't obtain the information directly, it's passed along to us. My guess would be the typical way we get to know anything, such as spying or bribery. And why does the USAF not know about the other country's efforts but your department does? My department sits above the USAF for UFO recovery and information in the same way the USAF sits above me on military plans for Ukraine. We were told at the time, if we had to give away information, only tell the public what the USAF knows. I'm pretty sure other countries, no departments like mine exist. Alternatively, do they know about US efforts? 
Russia and China, yes. Others, it depends on the level of information. Some governments still don't know aliens even exist or aren't sure. How do we know you aren't some FBI agent or other glowy? There's no way for me to prove that to you. You should always be asking though. All I can say is pay attention to things as time progresses and you'll be able to look back and see I was right. How many craft do we have at the moment? I don't know. I can tell you I've seen about 18 different models pass through for testing and research. Is Lockheed Martin involved in reverse engineering? They are a great company, aren't they? Can you describe some of the other tools found on wrecked craft? We have found things as simple as basic tools akin to tweezers in the lab. One that sticks out to me was an oval-shaped silver ball that would change colors based on how close it was to a source of energy. Another would be a sheet of metal that allowed you to view bones by placing it near someone's hand, etc. Can you describe any injuries or deaths that occurred involving alien craft? I've witnessed no deaths or injuries aside from corpses. I've never got to see one we had with an abductee, but they weren't sure at the time if she died on impact. 